Hello everyone and welcome to Soul Talk with Sahar. This is the fifth episode and my guest tonight is community builder and soul for business leader Sahar Nafal. Give me a couple of minutes and I'll try and get her online. Okay, she's not online. <laughs> if you're watching, if you can hear me well, see me well, let us know. And Har, are you there? No, not yet. Okay, she's there. I've invited her. Sahar, wave if you're there. Oh, great. Fantastic. So I'm adding you. Okay, I think you're coming on camera now. Please work. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sahar. Nice to see you. You too. Uh, I see can you sideways. You... Yeah. Can, okay. you, can you turn your phone uh, upright? Yes. Let me do that. Hold on one Yeah. Because we tried it horizontally before, but it didn't work. So. we okay. learned how about this better. this better yeah, okay, yeah. Here fantastic we go. now we're both on the same okay. um, length good um yes, before we start awesome. chatting i want to introduce you to our um, audience so for everyone who's watching or who's going to watch the broadcast later please leave a comment let us know sahar nafal is the founder of the bright side of life it's a women's community she's also a dynamic leader and an innovator Sahar is a master of community building. She's also an international speaker, and she has devoted her business to assisting women build stronger, deeper, and, and more um, passionate communities in their businesses worldwide. Um, Sahar has been, the, has been leading the bright side of community for more than 10 years now. And she has amazingly and impressively, Sahar, you've invited more than 20,000 speakers and leaders in their field to your platform of the bright side of life. Sahar is committed to change, to speaking in circuits and opening the doorways also to new and authentic people. Uh, Sahar, let me start by asking you, what is a soulful reader, leader? Okay, let me bring our guest. Oh, hi, Samar. Samar is watching from Canada. Okay, we lost contact. Sahar, let me know if you're back on. By the way, guys, this is a strawberry full moon. So I wonder if we're having technological hiccups. Last time we did this on the full moon, we also had the same problems. Sahar, are you there? bring you on camera now okay I know you're there and I'm adding you on the camera and it says that I can't bring you shall we start again yes I know you're here I'm adding you but I don't know why have you changed any settings or anything
Okay. Hi, Tafik. Just a moment. I'm trying to invite my guest. And I don't know why. Okay, I'm starting again. I don't, again. I don't, we're back again. I don't know what happened. Um, anyway, I blame it on the full moon. It's a strawberry full moon tonight. And maybe that's what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> okay, let, let us begin by asking you, what is a soulful re leader? You okay. build a lot of bridges and the work yeah. that you have started and have been doing, you know, for the last 10 years is really impressive. So Thank this fits much. well with, oh, and it fits well with our platform because the Bridges of Light is all about connecting and building bridges. But, yes. but let me tell you, I was really intrigued, you know, that you describe yourself and you are well known as a soulful business leader. So what is a soulful leader? What is a soulful <laughs> business leader? Perfect. That's a great question. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much, Sahar, for giving me this opportunity to be with all of you here today. And just oh, to share what my pleasure. My yeah, my life's experience with each and every one of you. And that's what it's really all about, isn't it? Um, Absolutely. So what is a soulful leader? Uh, first of all, I, um, a little bit about, about my background, why I started the Bright Side of Life Women's Community so people could know the context of, of where I came from. I was going through a dark side of life, going through a divorce, foreclosure, bankruptcy, IRS auditing, going through court, divorce. Wow. Divorce. <laughs> Everything you could ever imagine in 2008, I made a decision to leave a marriage that's no Yeah. My girls. And I started the bright side of life. So I'm able to bridge from the dark side to the bright side of life in order for nice. me to live a life that is more joyful, a life that is more in alignment with who I am, the soulful leader that I am. And before I knew it, more and more women began to come. They I started with six women in my family room, Sahar. And before I knew it, more and more women began to come. And I stepped into my leadership role because I realized that was one of my calling is to be able to empower, inspire women to step into their leadership role. Do you see? Yes. As soulful yes. leaders, women who have soul, women who are aligned with spirit, with God, and so the role went from leading the Bright Side of Life community for 11 years with thousands of attendees, some of the most amazing thought leaders, authors, and speakers in the world that attended and spoke on our stages. But now my next calling is to really step more into that soulful leader that I am and to be the example for other women. So what is a soulful leader? A soulful leader yeah. is someone who is a leader in any platform. It could be a mom that is leading her family. It could be a woman who is an executive or CEO of a big corporation or, or five, Fortune 500 corporation. I believe that each and every one of us has leadership inside of them, despite of their right. circumstances, despite of where they are. And so I wanna to show to every single woman that she is, who is connected to source, to, to God, to spirit, is a soulful leader. We first lead within so, and then we lead without, and, and then lead out. So what, if I may add to this, um, what you're describing, basically, you're inviting women in particular, but really everyone. Everyone, yes. To lead, to lead their life, basically, to walk their path, to show That's up, right. to step up, interconnect, and do what they need to do. That's right. That's right. I call, my new group is now called the Soulful Leader Circle, because life is a circle, Yes. Nice, and yes, nice. Men and women. Of course, there are men, men on this platform as well. So how can you step more into your leadership role as you lead from that place of soulfulness? That's excellent because, you know, very often my friends, my therapists, my colleagues, we talk about empowering the feminine. And I keep saying it isn't about empowering the feminine. 
um, it, it's because for me, feminine and masculine exist in every person. You need yes. both. And I think what you're doing is you're letting the feminine maybe own their masculine and show up and not be afraid to kind of lead and do what they need to do rather than being boxed in the traditional roles that society gave them. Well, it depends. You know, everybody has their own role in life, right? For me, I learned that a lot of the women in leadership actually exude or even operate from a more of a masculine. And it's totally yeah. the opposite. I want to share with women that they could be the feminine and actually create more from the space of feminine. And what is the creative feminine? The space of feminine for both men and women is a place of surrender, a place of receiving abundance, the flow of life. The, it, it is a place of where effortless, things come to you effortless. That's the space of feminine. But yeah. I know, but you know, I always have this discussion with, with you know, other female guests. It depends how you um, define being feminine because, you know, it is still feminine for a woman to show up, to lead, to do what she needs to do, to go up in stage, to let her voice heard. That is not being passive, nor is it being receptive. But if you're talking about leading life without struggle, I mean, absolutely, because why should we struggle? I think we struggle when we're not on the right path. I think we struggle when we try and be someone else. Do you agree with that? Yes, of course. But there is really a point, I want to tell you from my personal experience, Sahai, Please. Please. when I raised both of my girls on my own without support from anyone, okay, as I was going through the life struggle, I called on the life's learning and growing and evolving. And Absolutely. what I found is I was very driven from that place of masculine. I was the doer, right? I was taking okay. action. I was planning. I was organizing, creating events, inviting people. But I became so exhausted that I hit a wall in 2016. Because you were pushing. I, no, I understand. I, I agree. I was yeah. operating more from the masculine and avoiding the feminine. The feminine comes with ease and flow. And so now I've learned to balance. Okay. Now I've learned when I'm taking action, when I'm going on stage, when I'm planning, that's from that masculine space. But when I'm yeah. in grace with ease, when I'm on the stage, I take a deep breath and I allow everything that is supposed to be channeled through me, channeled organically and beautifully as I'm sharing who I am. And you're right. But you know, a lot, a lot of men do that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, both men and women. I mean, I'm not talking about the feminine as a female and the feminine as a male. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah that's a good point. A male. We're talking about the balance between the feminine and masculine. And you see a lot of men, they operate from the feminine because they need yes. to. And there's a lot of men that are too masculine, right? Yeah. And so yeah. Yeah. always a balance between the feminine and the masculine. But it's a great topic to talk about. Yeah, and I don't know. We just really got on. We hit it on fire. I just met you through a friend's friend. And she said, you have to meet Sahar in Chicago. And I'm like, okay. And it's not very uh, frequently that that happens, that, you know, I meet someone who is originally Middle Eastern, Palestinian, who um, does in a way what I do, but in a different way. So I'm really grateful to the coincidence that brought us together. Thank You've you. been also helping me um, re kind of set up my whole business, my work, especially after my husband passed away. And I really appreciate your help and coaching because you actually brought in the masculine, not the feminine. <laughs> you told me, get organized, you know, have packages. Um, but I think the grace that you talk about is what I call alignment. I think when we are in alignment with what we need to do, things do come with grace. And I found that, you know, just the right people showed up. They're helping me design a logo. Somebody else is helping me design something else. Even my hairdresser today started telling me about what lighting I should have, what microphone I should have. And I'm beginning to enjoy this rather than to stress. So I'm, I'm very grateful to you. And I encourage Thank all you. the women out there who need the right help to step up, to take their whatever alternative business they're in, to take it on a more professional level. But also you're trying to make the technology a lot easier um, yes. to save time. So and I think this is really... Yes, yes, about simplifying yeah. the message and how we work. The other thing that really interests me, Sahar, is it seems to me that everyone who goes on the path, for a lack of a better word, it's almost they get uh, pushed there, or let me say placed there, because they did go through a dark tunnel 
um, you know, the dark night of the soul, as it were. Um, almost everyone I know has to um, change countries, move, leave a relationship, start a new one, start a new business. What do you think is going on? What is that about? <laughs> That's a really great question. When I hit the wall in 2016, I made a decision that I need to alter and change my whole entire life. Imagine having a multi six figure income where I was coaching and, and, and leading and helping others. I had to literally go inside and, and do an upgrade. So what is it going to be? So here's what I believe. I believe when we are on the path of evolution, mastery, there's always a plateau. And yes. that plateau is the time for you to go inwards and ask yourself, what is the next calling for you? I don't believe there's only one calling. There's an evolution of calling. It's up to you to decide whether to answer the call or not. And the nice. way you know that your next calling, the next call, is you go through a plateau where everything stops, where you feel a sense of nothing is working, and that there's something else out there. And that's when the feminine comes in. It is for you to pause and go inward and ask the questions to spirit, to God, what is next? What am I supposed to be doing? And fully be in a place of spaciousness so you could be creative and allow the creative part of you, mm. right? That's lovely. To be able yes. to tell you and lead you to the next. So yes. the dark night of the soul is part of our journey in order for us to evolve and grow and learn. But there's always a place where we need to pause, go into a plateau and surrender to what is. Has, has that feeling or guidance, has it always been with you? Or is it something that became really clear? Like what happened to me in the middle of my crisis, as if I was hit on the head with a pan and suddenly it was like, oh, what am I doing? I shouldn't be here. I should be doing this. And it was a complete 180 degrees change, literally overnight. Yes. So for you, it was a different circumstances. I always believe when you, when the universe knows that you are done with a specific platform of your life, they will do everything to make sure you move on, nice. right? They support you. Right. I believe the yeah. same thing for me. It was a, a, a slow, I knew that marriage I was in. No it was a gradual. To me. Yeah. And I took okay. time to get myself ready to exit that stage of life. Right. With nice. me and my group, because nice. I was responsible for two other lives. It wasn't just me. So it took Absolutely. me time. But the next phase was for me to move to Illinois, Chicago, out of all the places on the world, like from California, beautiful, sunny California, to the cold winter. But I knew there was a calling beyond my, um, my wanting that I needed. It was a calling. But it took time. But all of a sudden, I hit the wall. Nothing was working. You know, my client base stopped. Everything froze. But the irony is the universe provided everything that I need. There was food on my table, a roof over my head. There were, there were clients that were giving me financial support. Family or friends were giving me their home to stay. And I literally didn't have a place to live. And then I woke up one day and I realized, okay, it's time for me to That's move. That's an amazing, amazing yeah. journey. Yes. yes. So did you but feel also, desperate? Perfect. Did you feel yes. without hope? You know, I don't know what it is, Sahar, but I've always known since I was a little girl, I am not like my family. Like, I'm sure you, you realize that as well. I, the I culture, relate to that, yes. The culture, the religion, the, where we come from is not really who fully I am. You know, I feel like I, I am somebody who is here to create change in the world and make a big impact. And I've always been told, just trust the process. And that's what I live on. How can I, every single morning, wake up, be grateful for all that I have and trust the process of life, knowing that all that I need is already here. All that Lovely. I need is already here. I want to say hello. We have Gitano, who's the founder of the Bridges of Life, watching. Hi, Gitano. We've got Nick watching from Dubai and some other people. Please give us a like, thumbs up. Even when you're watching this on the broadcast, leave a message and we'll get back to you. This guidance that was with you, because you're rather unusual in many ways, because you grew up in a family who were all, almost all of them were mediums. 
What was that like? Yes. Well, it wasn't really my immediate family, but it was my auntie, who's my mother's sister. She was a medium, her husband was a medium, and they gave birth to six children, and each one of them have a specific gift. So at age 16, I tell you, like, my soul couldn't have picked a more perfect divine family, because it needed me to begin the practice at an early age, because my soul came here to really create huge change, right? And so I, my soul picked me, the physical body, picked the family, picked the, the culture, the religion, specifically to learn exactly what I need in order for me to be on that path to empower and inspire what, the thousands. And so- Were you aware, uncle, were you aware, sorry, were you aware of this on a soul level or is yes. that a realization that came to you gradually? I did, but I kept it inside of me. I knew there was something- How very- amazing. But I didn't obviously share it with much, but I was very drawn to going to the readings that they had at their home, which was right around the corner from where I live. You know, I, I, I was very intrigued by the books that they were sharing for me to read. I was 16 or 17. Which um, is really unusual, you know, at that time in the Middle East to kind of be exploring all of that, wasn't it? I find that really It was here in the US. It was in the US. I've been here for 43 years. And I was 16, so I was 12 years old when I moved from the Middle East to here. Oh, wow. During the time from zero to 12, I was just living the life based on what whatever my family needed to, you know. Uh, But Mm. I came here to the U.S. again, part of my soul. I needed to come to the U.S., so it was provided for me, right? And it was provided Mm. to where I, my auntie, who has been here 10 years before us, my soul chose to come closer so I could be introduced to that. You see, everything nice. is or- orchestrated for Becomes us. Becomes synchronicity, yes. 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 I think sometimes um, clients, you know, ask me, how do I know if I'm on the right path? I think, you know, when you're not pushing, you know, when the right people show up at the right time, you know, when you're kind of, you know, inspired. Like when I was, I was living in Kuwait, when the Iraqi invasion took place, and I just knew I had to leave and I had to find my way to England. I had no idea what I was going to do in England at all. And if you ask me when I was young, will I be doing what I'm doing now, become a coach, a mentor, be a psychic? Absolutely not. But I think if you trust what you're going through, if you trust um, your heart, if you trust that feeling of I'm enjoying what I'm doing, although I don't know what the next step is, the path kind of unfold. Did you find that to be true? Absolutely. You have to go with the flow. It's not easy, right? We're not saying it's everything not is beautiful and wonderful. It's not easy, but always follow your heart, your intuition, rather than what is in your head, right? And one yeah. thing that I'm learning is that we are all one. Everything is one, yeah. you know, um, and nothing is in the way. If we, are, if we are all one, then nothing is in the way, Right. We are all that's one interesting. In the I, I like that. Yeah. Yes. That's and an so often, thought. Mm. Often we, we, we box ourselves. And that's what I love about your coaching and your mentoring. You help people <laughs> unbox themselves. <laughs> Thank we box you. ourselves, our conditioning, our upbringing, the way we believe that we're supposed to do things, people, to influence people. Being authentic. I love what you just said. How can you be the most authentic self that you can yeah. so you can attract authentic self? One of my favorite quotes goes like yeah. this. We are a mirror of relationships. Every mi- relationship in our life is a mirror of us. And, absolutely, and absolutely. A person, people often say, how do you get your clients? How do you get attract all these amazing women, powerful leaders that want to work with you to help them with whatever it is that I need to help them with? And, and I say, I really don't do much other than know that I'm fully showing up to the essence of who I am as Sahar and that I am a change agent, that I'm here to create change. And when they're ready, they will find me. When I like that change agent. Yeah, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna borrow that. That's a lovely yes, expression. Absolutely. So I'm a change agent who's vibrating a certain vibration. And so Sahar from Dubai figured out a way to find me through another source and met me because she's ready for me. Same thing with your clients, Sahar. Those who are ready, some of you may be interested in learning more about how you could work with Sahar, right? And all the gifts that she has. 
You're watching yeah. her. You're just having a pull, like, oh my god, I need to work with this woman, right? There's this I, I like vibration. Yeah, I I like what you do. I like, I admire that you open up your groups, your circle for other people to participate, to post. Because a lot of people don't do that. You know, when we go into silos, we, we lose the connection. And it's almost yeah. like you're yelling on your own. But when you are in a group or in a circle, and I really like that, that we yeah. are all one. When we interconnect, the energy yeah. that comes from the universe is a lot better. It's kind of being part of a grid, an electrical grid. And if yes. you're connected to the grid, then your house, you know, the lights are on in your house. But if you yeah. work in a cave on your own, it becomes very difficult. And when you first told me, you know, Sahar, start a circle in Dubai, I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm not a circle person. But I'm beginning to see, you're beginning to win me over. Because really what you're telling me in my definition, you're saying interconnect. And I am all for networking, for connecting. You know, it's the same when Gaetano called me out of the blue. I was in the middle of my grieving and he said, Sahar, the angel said, I need to interview you. Come on my show. And I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> and yeah, and before I know it, I'm doing this. It encouraged me to also start my own um, soul talk on YouTube. It encouraged me to go after the theme of unboxing, which is, as you said, it's all about opening up to the real identity. And I yeah. think when we wear fake identities, you know, like we wear the wrong side um, of clothing, then you become uncomfortable and you start pushing and pulling and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and life, life is a little bit like that, isn't it? When you find something that clicks or a person that clicks, then you just keep going. Yes, absolutely. I always uh, talk about, you know, I'm a community builder expert and I get interviewed hundreds of times on radio, TV show, wherever you need to uh, be interviewed about community building. And I love what you said about when something is, you know, you're wearing clothing that don't fit you. And I want to add mm -hmm. to that is the, it, the clothes may Please. be too tight, but I want you to think about like many people wear oversized clothes, Sahar. That's where the boxing yeah. comes in, right? And yes. what I've often learned is that um, when you wear overclothes, it's like you're hiding. Just take yeah. off the coat that's over, you yeah. know, just take it off and just show yeah. off exactly how you're supposed to. As long as you have clothing, it's you... intact. So, so one <laughs> of the things that I want to invite yeah. people to think about is it's not just about us. It's about our community. And I love you say, I'm a community leader. I'm a community connector. I'm a community builder expert. And I absolutely love to bring people together because I have an abundant consciousness. I do not have a scarcity mentality. I know nice. that when we collectively come together, and you know, as I teach women also how to come together in circles, right? Circling, to always be open to the abundance that is flowing among us. The universe yeah. has so much flow of energy. And one of yeah. the things- The universe is for, infinite, yeah. It's infinite, yeah. it is available. We are all one. Nothing is in the way. We're all one. And you know what I've learned is that the universe is the mind, right? Yeah. The universe yeah. is the mind of everything. I, I'm just going to take a second. Um, Sahar, I want to welcome, uh, say hello to Bridie. Bridie is watching from Ireland. She's an incredible medium. You must connect at some stage. And Gitano is saying he can't see you. Can everyone else see us? I can see you. So I, I don't know. And, and Nick can see us from Dubai. Gaetano, try and reset, go out and come back in. But Sahar is definitely on and I'm seeing her. I'm I want to go back to this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm connected I, I all the time. <laughs> I, you are, because I like when we start the session, we start with a meditation. Oh. Oh, they're saying they can't see you, but they can see me. Oh, how amazing. Okay, what can about... They, can they hear how me? About you? Can you hear? Can you hear Sahar? Bridie, can you see both of us? Or is the problem... I can see you. And I'm going to save this recording and hopefully make a video out of it. They're saying they can't see you. They can only see me. Can they hear me? But you can see. Can you, can you give us thumbs up if you can hear? 
If you can hear my guest, if you can hear Sahar, can you hear her? Okay, something is on. Nick, can, can you, you hear, hear Sahar in Chicago? Yeah, they can hear you. Okay. Uh, Samar is from Canada. They... Samar, can you see Sahar in Chicago? Oh, they can't see you, but they can see me. I don't know. I don't know why. Do you... Um... Not really, because, you know, you're like my fifth guest and, and um, I've done three or four interviews with Gitano and, and I could, they all... I could try to leave again, but if they could hear me, I mean, I see that I am on. They can hear you. Yeah, they can hear you. Okay. And, and there's a comment that you sound really lovely, so I'm going to give uh. that a heart. Uh, uh. I'm, I'm going to continue because I have a feeling I can save this and republish it again. Okay. Um, because I, I don't want to interrupt the flow. Okay, that's um, fine. Yeah, is that okay with you? And that's um, perfect. I like that when you start the meeting, you start with the meditation, you call in higher guidance and so on. Do you do the same when you hold your circles? Absolutely. Always, always start with uh, quieting our mind, connecting to spirit, to soul, asking for ascended masters, protection, holding space for every single person in the circle. Because at the end, we're not just circling with humans, but we're also circling with other, you know, <laughs> you know, ascended masters, beings, people, yeah. beings uh, in order for us to be, again, we're all in one, right? We're all connected. Um, yes, absolutely. Why is, do that. why is building community so important for you? So ever since I was a little girl, I loved gatherings with families. I loved... Uh, creating opportunities for me to come together, family uh, reunions. I loved uh, seeing people happy, connecting people. And so it's important because uh, my journey of life, I never felt a sense of belonging, right? Palestinian, mm -hmm. first of all, born in Kuwait. Kuwait is just the name on my passport. Then lived in Saudi Arabia, where we were told that we're called infidels, unfortunately. I had to be veiled at age 11 or even younger, nine or 10, I was told that I need to be invisible. Having blonde hair, blue eyes, light complexion really caused a lot of challenge for me. I didn't fit in physically, religiously. I didn't fit in, right now I'm more spiritual than anything else. I didn't fit in as a Palestinian. Coming to the US yes. thinking, wow, there's so many people like me, Sahar. But unfortunately, as soon as they asked where you came from, I was at awe, at awe, like, where did I really come from? I can't you know, I'm Palestinian, but I never lived there, but I came from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So the word Arabia really haunted me because now I'm being discriminated against because I'm Arab. And so throughout high school, uh, middle school, high school was really tough for me. And then finally I broke out of stepping into the Sahar of who I am. Even in my marriage, I never felt a sense of belonging. My husband was Lebanese and I love Lebanese people. And unfortunately he fought with the Palestinian people. So he brought that war with him to my home, <laughs> you know, That's it was always yeah. about this or that. And so finally I called myself Sarah because I didn't know who Sahar is. And once yeah. I made a yeah. decision to leave this relationship, I thought to myself, I bet you there's so many people out there that don't feel a sense of belonging. And therefore I'm going to start a community called the bright side of life and invite everyone who doesn't feel a sense of belonging. And you know what I learned? Yeah. Us, the people that are making an impact in the world never feel a sense of belonging. Literally. That's interesting. Yes, we yeah. all so, feel like we don't even come from this planet, right? We come from a different yeah. planet. And we're here as earth angels, as healers to create change in the world. And of course, our families don't understand. So I never felt a sense of belonging until I stepped into the essence of who I am, which is Sahar. Yeah. And it's a beautiful name. It means dawn early in the morning. And that's when the flow began, because now I am authentic to myself. And so, yes, I, I could. Mm, I've lost you now. I've, it, I've lost the sound. Ah, okay, now you're now back. I, okay. You're back. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I like so, to bring people together in community, because, and I, I do have, um, and I, I shared that with you before, there are four different communities that I believe each and every one of us need to really intentionally know how to belong to. 
And okay. I'll can you tell us? You. Can you tell us? Absolutely. Yeah, please. Absolutely. The first one is our personal community. These nice. are five, five aspects of our personal community in which you need I'm taking to notes. I'm taking notes. Okay. <laughs> and I, I'm going to invite people to actually do this exercise with me. And I'm going to pull it up okay. right here. This is the first exercise that we do when we do in a circle. Are your personal community. I want you to think about, get a piece of paper. This is really important because I want to make sure to serve you um, on here. It's not just about me talking. I want you to get a piece of paper and pen. I want you to draw a big circle, right? As the largest circle you could ever uh, draw on a piece of blank paper. Okay. And then... I'm doing it, and I hope our viewers and listeners are perfect. doing it. This is, perfect. of course, going out to my, to my podcast as well, Sahar. Yes. I turned the interviews into a podcast, and I've got perfect. like, I don't know, 200,000 people downloading it. So I hope people benefit from this, because I like the circle and the connecting. And, yes. you know, in my mind, I didn't see it that way. And if, as you said, if we're all... Uh, connected in a circle, then there is yes. nothing in the way. And I really yes. love that. Please, Thank yes. You. So we were saying there are four circles, four types no, of communities, one huge, rather. One big circle. And inside the circle, I want, I want to invite each and every one of you to draw five other circles. One, two, three, four, okay. five. Five circles, any way you want. The first one, you're going to put social. The okay. second one, you're going to put physical. Okay. The third one is mental. Mm -hmm. Number four is emotional. And number five is spiritual. And perhaps, Sahar, you could show people your paper so they could see the example. Beautiful. It always, Love it. Love it. It always appears yes, flipped. Yes. I invite you to do it even bigger because we have to write more. But yeah. I love what you said. Now, here's, here's the next step, which is the most important piece. <laughs> In your social circle, you ask yourself this question. Ready? Okay. Who in my social circle makes me laugh and brings joy to my life? Those who are loving me completely, authentically for who I am, only bring the best in me. Friends that Lovely. go out and have fun. It could be a family member. Mm. It could be a pet. Who are these people? And I want you to write at least three people. Okay. Okay. The Very second nice. one is the physical. Who does encourage me to exercise, be healthy, eat well, be fit? Who are the people in your life that really want you to be the best that you can physically? It could be your gym instructor. It could be the person, uh, your neighbor that you walk with. I have friends that I take walks with in nature all the time. It could nice. be someone, Lovely. a family member that tells you to go and drink water. Number three is, phys is, number three is mental. Who could help mm -hmm. you, support you through difficult times? When, offer you a listening ear. Somebody who you could call at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're stuck and when you're tired, when you're unsure and uncertain. The Sorry, can I, yeah, can I interrupt ahead. you here? Because, because that reminds me of a story. One of my best friends in London was actually my cousin, my cousin Saida, and I owe her a lot because she kind of, put me on this path in an, any, you know, in an indirect way. So I, I called her up. She was my, one of my, you know, two, three, four o'clock in the morning um, to call friends. And I really had a problem one day and I called her like three o'clock in the morning. And I said, I'm really upset, you know, this has happened and I'm really upset and I don't know what to do. And she very calmly said, yes, you're absolutely right. We will find an answer, but not now. At 10 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> sleep now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, so the third okay. one, I'm sorry. Emotional I said, circle. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, the mental one is to help you learn, stimulate your thoughts. It could be YouTube videos. It could be people who are intellectual. It could be your coach, your mentor. Sahar is awesome when it comes to that mental aspect of it. Emotional, again, it provides you. support. And again, three okay, people. Okay, so the, the support people, comes people. under the emotional. Yeah, yes. okay. Three, three um, emotional is three. spiritual. Okay, so helps you find meaning in life. Yes, again, a mentor, a coach. Oh, this that's is lovely. Is, and your gift, Sahar, is to help people find meaning in life, find their purpose, find why they're here on earth, why, what they signed up here for, right? And so mm -hmm. those are the five circles. So the next thing is, you're going to draw a circle outside 
of that circle. And what mm -hmm. I invite you to do as you write this list, and by the way, one person could be in all the circles. Um, it doesn't mean that they so, all have to so be. So do you, do you mean like that? Like a bigger yes. circle outside? Okay. No, no, no. Another smaller circle outside. Find a location. Okay. And put okay. people that I'm ready to let go of. Oh, wow. So your circle that are is, people that, that you want to keep outside of the oh, big so circle are people who are you are ready to let go of. I've recently let go of a family member that I knew. You know, this goes, okay. yeah, this goes with tonight's theme because the strawberry full moon, as they call it, the pink moon, is all about letting go, especially of people yes. who stand emotionally in your way yes. so that you can be encouraged to continue on your path. Hi, Nadia. I know Nadia you. is watching us from Saudi Arabia. Okay, Hello. so people I'm ready to let go of? That box you. That keep you in oh, a box. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So you need to put a circle. And I want you to think of, these are the people that don't encourage you to be the best that you are. They don't push you to really grow. These are the people okay. that want to keep you under the covers, uh, veiled in the box. And for some reason, so they could feel better. I had to let go of a family okay. member uh, just this yeah. last week, uh, actually a couple of yeah. weeks ago, and it feels so good. And it's okay. You know what? It's okay. So let go of people that are toxic. And so that's what you do. So when you visit your, your social, yes, your personal community, you're very intentional who are the people that bring more joy, okay. help you with your mental stimulation, with your spirituality. That's interesting. With your health and wellness, yeah. and so on and so forth. So that's one community. Because you can, you can bring your, your energy up when you're reverberating with people who are of the same, rather than yes. being worried, how am I going to be judged? How am I going to be yes. um, boxed, you know, because I don't belong in that circle. That's absolutely You know, this is right. really um, interesting. When I was in London, I was, you know, invited to speak at a woman's circle. And I really had no idea of what to talk about because they were incredible women, very powerful women. But the circle itself was very social, very privileged. And I thought, hmm, I'm not that kind of person. But I did go. And as soon as I finished, you know, people were very quiet. So I didn't know they were interested. Are they following or not? But I continued. And then when I finished, they kept coming up to me one by one as if they were afraid to admit that they were interested. And they started opening up and they started asking me all these questions. And it was one of the most incredible things that have happened to me. Humans are humans. Doesn't matter how many zeros you have in your bank account. No, I think it's about being in a circle. You know, when you are in a community, Influence. unconsciously, Influence. Um, yeah. you, you begin to support each other. And there is something yeah. that you said once. You said it's all about people um, working from the heart and they need that heartful connection in order yes. to be who they are and do what yes. they want. I call them heart centered individuals Lovely. who operate from the place yes. of heart and love and giving. And that's how it works. And Thank I, you, I, I wanted, uh, Yes. And so your personal, there's the first community is your personal community. The second community is, and those will go much faster, but I love doing this exercise for everyone so they could leave with something valuable. Second community yeah, is your we're biggest getting, community. We're getting a lot of hearts. Yay. Okay. So, so the, second, so the is... second community is about making sure that yeah. it's in your business, uh, your career. Who are the people okay. that are supporting you in every way? Joint venture, colleagues, uh, bosses. Who are these people that are always supporting you? I invite you to either get close to them so you could, again, be even better and learn from them. Or if you feel like they have toxic energies, have your boundaries and surround yourself with only these positive people nice. at work. Because often you go to okay. work and you have a long career and you're always you know, engaging with people, but I give you permission to not engage with people with toxic energy, right? So this is, this is like the first circle in the five. Is that no, right? No, 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 the, no. Uh, the, what ah. we just did, yeah. Though that there's four different communities, which is your personal community. Okay which we just did the exercise. Oh, the, okay, okay. The second one is just making a list of all the people that you work with, whether you're an entrepreneur or business owner or a corporation, whatever it is that you do, make a list of all your colleagues, anyone who's related to your business 
and do a check energetically to see if they're the right people. You could either want to continue to work with them because your relationship is good, want to get yes. better, become closer to them because they elevate you or you want to have boundaries around them or maybe let them yeah. go if you can. As far as yeah. your third community is your global community. That's the place in which you oh, are I understand. Creating, okay. creating change. So we have our personal community, our business community and global community. Global community could be a place where you're from and you want to create more change. It could be a country that you relate to and you want to bring people together. Those are good for activists who want to create change. I just want to work with everyone, right? Everyone all over the world. Mm -hmm. But you could pick a specific area of the world that is resonating with you that you want to focus on, whether you're a coach or help or want to donate money or you want to even create. An you know, I think... With, with the internet, um, like, you know, with what Gitano did with the Bridges of Light, it's incredible because it would have been very difficult to create these communities. And I call Absolutely. it, let's call it the community of light. And literally within two weeks, you know, we've had like 1,200 people, which is incredible. Uh, and I don't know how many members we have now. I think we are close to um, 1,500, if not over. And it's only been six weeks. Because these people, the light workers, the people who are interested in what is beyond the visible, didn't really have a place to go. Yes. And I remember when I started in England, you know, back in 2004, I think I was one of the first people to start an online magazine. Mm -hmm. And then my former, you know, mentor and teacher, she was, she moved to the New York and she said, okay, I'm going to do that too. And we actually called it the bridge across the Atlantic because oh, we were exchanging it. Yes. you know, articles and stuff. But now you can go bigger and wider and you can connect and you can energize and you can uplift everyone on your way up. Yes, absolutely. Which is you really know, what you're doing. Yes, thank you very much. And the last but not least is your spiritual community. Oh, I right? see. Sorry, I interrupted so you. Yeah. Yes, so the spiritual community i want to make sure to complete and give you as much as information as possible your okay, spiritual community now. are your guides your ascended masters your spirit guides uh, archangels uh, divine angels people uh, or not people beings that are supporting you because this community is it's there to support us the light people the light energies they're there to help us and guide us but often we forget to connect and ask for guidance and support yes. so don't forget that spiritual community as well and uh you know these are the four areas that intentionally if you do the exercise you are going to be surrounding yourself intentionally not by default with the right people yes. that have the right vibration yeah. and so for nice. you to raise community and i encourage a lot of People, and I work with women because this is my calling is to help and support women, even though my work could help anybody, is to, if you have a calling to create a circle, you know, I'm here to support you, obviously, but if you have a calling to lead a circle, this is the best way how you could surround yourself with the most amazing people. Sahar, the reason I started a circle in, in Chicago, because I didn't find a circle in which I'm able to... To belong to. To belong to that I could share my aspirations. I could share my spiritual calling. I could speak the language that I speak with you right now with safety. So I had to create my own circle. And so I tried to belong to other circles, but this one person said to me, I don't know what to do with you. Your energy is too high vibrational for the group. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm going to take that as, as not an insult, but as a good... Uh, as a compliment. As yeah. a compliment. And it was true. And now we attract only the amazing. So... I encourage if women are there, even men that are entrepreneurs, business owners that want to create that community in their business to invite and share their brilliance like you're doing, that is something like superb. How do you take, Sahar, this spirituality, um, the awareness, the working with higher guidance, how do you transfer that to doing business? Because you also run something, the Soulful Business Leader. Yes, so that's really interesting. You know, how do you bring the spirituality into business? Because a lot of people can see them at conflict. I, I only work with conscious people, to be honest with you. And conscious people like yourself, all of my clients are entrepreneurs or business owners that are coaches, healers, consultants, business 
in any kind of business that they want to take their business to the next level, whether they want to create circle through circling or through business building. And I am very particular. So when I invite people to do my, their first, the first free consultation with me, I really check in and ask them, I say, is there a specific belief that you have? Is there a, a common God that you believe in or a God that you believe in? And I just right away tell them, this is what my belief is and I want to make sure if it's right. For example, many of the born again Christians or people that are really, really um, into believing specific religion, they're not going to be a good fit for me, right? So the concept mm -hmm. that I teach, you already know. Like when I tell you we meditate, we connect to spirit. You already know. I don't have to explain the language, Sahar, correct? Mm -hmm. And so I bring, I call it spirituality and business success. In order for mm -hmm. us to be successful, we have to use the tools of spirituality. And 50% of my teachings incorporate spirituality, spiritual tools, techniques in ways, because that's how our business becomes ease and, and with a flow. Ease and grace with a flow is when we're connected to spirit and getting guidance from them. So what I tell people is this. So, I have a partner up yeah. there, except I make all the money and I don't pay them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so really what you're saying, it's about awareness. Yes. And it's not about what religion, because you can still have people who are religious. Yes. But it's a question of finding out, you know, how to um, connect with them. Mm -hmm. Like when I did my four year holistic therapy class, I did it in, in Jordan. It was an amazing um, course. And of course, there were some people who were, you know, conservatives and adhering the, to their religious beliefs. But they found a way to connect and to accept the spirituality. Because I think in the end that there is really one higher intelligence. There That's is really right. one creator. You know, there cannot That's be right. two. So yes. it just depends which way you go about it. And I think, I think if you I are think, unboxed, yes. you begin I, I to accept all, and we're integrate. we're all creators. I think we're all creators. Yeah. There's not one. We are all one but we are all yeah. creators of that one, you see? Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. Because even in physics, you know, now quantum physics has been talking about this, that we are all a hologram of the big thing. Because there is nothing else in, the uni in this universe. You know, we're all made up yeah. of the same stuff. W when I tell my clients that right. I, the I'm, reason I'm reading, we're human... Yeah, I'm reading... Yeah. Is the Kabbalian talks the blood, about the all. Yes? Sorry, it's just, there's a little of a gap. I just want to say that people forget that the blood that runs in our veins has iron. And iron is formed in the heavens at extremely high temperature yes. with stars and galaxies gliding, yes. you know, colliding. And we forget that iron is not yes. from the earth. Yes. So we are literally made of the yes. same stuff as the universe. Yes, we are. I, I saw a chart. Maybe I'll share it of what are we component, what we're made of just the other day. And nice. I was looking and I go, wow, this is fascinating. So yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we, we forget, we forget that truth. But you know, we box ourselves or we take on an identity in order to fit. So this is where how I see, yes. you know, the unboxing thing and the community coming together, because if you unbox, then you don't have to fit, you know, you'll find the right fit because you'll be on the right path and you do it in support of, of communities around you. The community thing, yes, you know, absolutely. even worldwide has become a hot topic. Um, you know, globally, people are connecting. Um, the technology made it possible that people like us, like the Bridges of Light, like you, like me, they can create their own community and allow themselves as well as others to thrive in this community. Because a lot of people are worried about technology, but I think it's actually doing humanity a lot of good if used and directed in the right way. 100%. Otherwise, we wouldn't, be having, we wouldn't be having this interview if it wasn't for technology. Yes, I agree 100%. 100%. Um, so, so what yeah. is the next... Yeah, please, go. No, no, go ahead. You have a question. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you, um, after all this building and so on, what is the next um, thing for you? Sorry, I'm just reading a question. Um, Bridie says that she really missed the first half of the show, but this is excellent and she's really enjoying it. Oh, bless you, Bridie. Sending you both love and light. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. That you, is Bridie. really lovely. Thank you. Um, the next phase is 
I, I continue to grow uh, women's circles. I am looking for leaders who want to create circles all over the world, the Soulful Leader Circle. And the next thing is I am working on updating my website in order for me to become a global uh, thought leader in the area of community building and belonging. And so they'll be speaking all over the world because I am, I, my phase of my life of raising my girls, they're both now adults, they have their own careers, they graduate from college. Um, my career of learning and growing and evolving, that platform is there and now it's time for me to go out to the world and share the message of community building and belonging with the masses. And as I continue oh, creating circles all over the world. So if you're interested oh, in wonderful. building a circle, a soulful leader circle, I am here to support you. That's wonderful. I, I may do that in time. I've got a lot to yes. do first. But the idea is growing on me because uh, really there is no other way except networking. Not networking so much, but connecting. I don't yes. mean networking in the sense that you have to belong somewhere and you know, take from the group without giving anything. But I think there is strength in networking, in connecting or interconnecting because really you allow the energy to flow much more easily. Yes. I mean, so, I've met so many people, um, you know, here on the Bridges of Light that I would not have heard of or met yes, had we yes. not connected in this way. That's right. But it has to be intentional, Sahar. Am I making sense? It has to be intentional. There has to be a reason for every person in your life. It's not the reason of you to be supported, hmm. but also a reason of how you could support them. How can you create a flow between you and them in order for the receptivity of the human energy to be reconnecting. Like there's a lot yeah. of people that I check in that want to be my friend or they want to be in partnership with me. And I, in, I, I just, I, I interview them. I said, I'd love to get on a call. Let's see if it's a good match. If they're vibrationally not a good match, whether they want to be my client or whether they want to be my partner or they want to be my friend, it's going to be a no. I yeah. don't just, yeah hang out with people um, just to hang out with people and you don't you know, build this is also just to build community it has yeah. to be intentional and that's what i want to teach intentional community building authentic intentional community building from a soul level vibrating at the same level as you are even higher right you just don't make friends just to make friends for the sake of friendship you're you're doing yeah. it because you're going somewhere and you're directing that energy. I mean, this is really the formula that I teach clients. If you want to manifest something, it is not enough to have the intention, but also that you direct your feelings, your thoughts, your action towards yeah. that goal. Otherwise, yeah. you build up a lot of energy and then you're not, supposed, you're not sure what to do with it. <laughs> That's correct. That's right. And you're great at it too, Sahar. Oh, bless you, Sahar. I'm so grateful. Thank you for coming onto the show. I hope yes. I can save this video and, and have it. Of course, I'll send it to you. And thank you guys for watching. I want to thank everyone that was here live. Leave a comment and I, if you have any questions for me or for Sahar. Um, is your website, is it going to be the same? I know you're working on it and it's offline now. Well, right but now, is the domain the same? Yes, it's saharnafal.com. Sahar, S-A-H-A-R-N-A-F-A-L. Dot com. And right now, what's parked there is literally an application for people that want to learn more about how they could create their own circles or people that want to learn more about uh, what they resonate with in, in our talk and how to build intentional community. And they could just fill it out, schedule a call, and I'll be more than happy to offer them a half an hour, 45 Fantastic. minutes. Fantastic. Conversation. Oh, that's so, wonderful. You hear that, everyone? You have yes. an opportunity for a free consultation with Sahar. Let's build, continue building this bridge across the globe. Thank you, Sahar, very, very Thank much. You. I really I enjoyed having you. you on the bye show. Bye-bye, everybody. I'll see you bye -bye. soon. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Buonasera a tutti. I forgot to say that because everyone is Italian here. Thank you for watching.